Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Marcus Rosa, a.k.a. Mizuma TV, back at y'all with some more boxing talk, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. I'm just taking a nice walk throughout the city, man, back at y'all with some more boxing talk. On the road to 3K, we well into the 2100 mark. Shout out to the nation and the mob for making this possible. All right, y'all, let's talk about the whole thing that's going on between Shakur Stevenson and Javante Davis and it possibly being next. Unfortunately, uh, based off of the research that I have done and some videos that I had stumbled across on the Internet, it seems like it's a little bit too good to be true. You know what I'm saying? If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I've seen that coach Calvin Ford, the head trainer of Javante Davis, come out and speak about, you know, the possibility of Javante Davis and Shakur Stevenson fighting next. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't really put too much stock into what the trainers say because at the end of the day, it's rare if the trainer of the fighter is actually a part of the business of the fighter. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we got some, like, you know, trainer slash manager combinations like Bo Mack and shit like that. My father, Lando Rosa, is a trainer slash manager. But for the most part, a lot of trainers just stick to what they know, and that's training fighters. You know what I'm saying? And Coach Calvin Ford is one of them. You know what I mean? Who, you know, he his main objective is just to make sure that Javante Davis is sharp and ready for the fight. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. You know, staying on top of him, making sure he's doing the right things. You feel what I mean? But um, I had listened to an interview. I had listened to an interview he had done with like Fanon, I believe. And um, when speaking about the whole possibility of fighting uh, Shakur Stevenson next, it just seemed like it was a lot of like beating around the bush and shit like that. Not really. Uh, wanting to speak on Shakur Stevenson too much, you know what I'm saying? But the thing that let me know that most likely this fight is not happening next was Calvin Ford talking about uh, plenty of other fights that Javante Davis can pursue and it'll still be big fights. And when Fanon had asked him what the fights may possibly be, he said, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that. Which gives me the impression that, you know what I mean, there's either not that many fights available <laughs> that's bigger than the Shakur Stevenson fight or... He doesn't have any idea yet. He doesn't want to put a name out there that they may possibly not fight. You see what I'm saying? But regardless, man, it seems like, you know, Shakur Stevenson isn't necessarily next. You know what I'm saying? And it's just disappointing in all honesty because as boxing fans, you know, we see it as a perfect opportunity for Shakur and Javante to face each other next due to the fact that Lomachenko walked away from the negotiations against Javante Davis. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, looking at the whole situation now, it seems like, a Isaac Cruz rematch may be more realistic. You know what I mean? A William Cepeda fight may be more realistic. Maybe Oscar De La Hoya was right. Maybe he knew something that we didn't know. He said that we could explore all these other sanctioning bodies. And he was playing it as if they were all, you know, realistic options. And looking over the situation now, William Cepeda seems to be like a pretty good, you know, possible fight for Javante Davis next later on this year. You see what I mean? So... You know, I heard Coach Calvin speaking about how he doesn't really like, you know, Shakur Stevenson's style. Went on to say that, you know, black fighters, when they fight other black fighters, they don't really generate much revenue or they don't do the biggest numbers. And then he cited uh, Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford as an example and stuff like that. He said how they weren't able to outdo Tank and all this other bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And he was pretty much, you know, just talking about what Floyd Mayweather did with all his, throughout his career match himself up against Mexican fighters, black fighters versus Mexican fighters. And he alluded to the fact that that's what really does the numbers at the end of the day. Not when black fighters fight other black fighters. You feel me? So, you know, it is what it is. I can name multiple, you know, top selling pay-per-view fights of all time that were black fighters versus black fighters. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis is still up on that list. But regardless, that's a totally different conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, when Calvin Forrest speaks about the possibility of fighting uh Shakur Stevenson I'm not going to necessarily say it's fair it's not like the coach panda situation where you know what I'm saying he's trying to avoid the Shakur Stevenson questions at all costs but at the same time he makes it clear that you know he's not the biggest fan of Shakur Stevenson's style and I'm not talking from a fan's perspective I'm talking about from a trainer's perspective you see what I'm saying he makes it clear that he wants Javante to go up against certain styles you know that are like aggressive come forward styles because those type of styles play into Javante Davis's favor Javante Davis has great timing like I told you in previous videos, he can fight on the back foot. He sets traps real well. He's really good at running fighters into shots. And usually the fighters that run into shots are the aggressive come forward fighters. You know what I'm saying? The more openings, the, the more you open up, the more opportunities Javante Davis has to land that kill shot. Shakur Stevenson is not going to put himself in many situations where he's going to get, a, he, he's going to get, you know, reckless and, and abandon his defense or anything like that. And I think that's exactly why Calvin Ford has a problem with Shakur Stevenson's style. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he don't give a fuck about it being an entertaining fight because at the end of the day, 
you know, that's not his, you know, business. His business is for his fighter to get the win. It doesn't matter how he gets it as long as he gets it. So I don't think, I think that's more of a thing that the promoters got to worry about because, you know, as long as the fight, the, uh, if the fans are bored, you know what I'm saying, they may receive backlash, but if fights are entertaining, you know, these fans will continue to pay for these fights. So that's not really, you know, Cal Coach Calvin's concern, even though he may make it seem that way. But, you know, he's making it seem like, you know, Shakur Stevens is a boring style and that's not a style that, you know, he wants Sh Javante Davis to go up against. It's not necessarily that. It's that Shakur Stevenson isn't going to give Javante the opportunities that Javante is accustomed to getting when he's fighting guys like Mario Barrios, Hector Luis Garcia, you know, Ryan Garcia. Shakur Stevens is a totally different style. He's a very intelligent fighter. And um, he's not taking much chances for Javante Davis to capitalize off of. So it's going to be harder for Javante Davis to get his style off, for him to land that kill shot. And I remember in previous interviews, Coach Calvin said, why would we fight Shakur Stevenson if we can't do what we do? And that, that says a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? Him saying that just blatantly admits to the fact that Javante Davis isn't going to be able to do what he do, which is, you know what I mean, land that kill shot, get these beautiful knockouts. I think that he's well aware of that. You know, it's possible for Javante to get the knockout. Let's not get it wrong. But he's not going to be able to, you know, have many opportunities to find that kill shot. You know what I'm saying? So it might end up being a fight where it goes to the scorecards. And that's not something that, you know, Javante Davis is too fond of. You know what I'm saying? Hence why he has a high knockout ratio. He goes for the kill. When he smells blood, he goes for it. Against Shakur Stevenson, he might not smell that blood. You know what I mean? They have to resort to other things. You see what I'm saying? Which is, you know, trying to win round by round instead of getting the knockout. Javante Davis has been accustomed to in his career being okay with losing a few rounds because he knows slowly but surely he's going to find that shot that's going to get that fighter up out of there. I don't know if that scenario is going to fit the Shakur Stevenson fight. I don't know that. I think that uh, Coach Calvin doesn't know that either, which is why, you know, he's not really too hell-bent on fighting Shakur Stevenson next. Now, he did mention that Shakur Stevenson is on the list, and um, he should be on the list. And if y'all don't know what list we're referring to, you know, Javante Davis has said on multiple occasions he has a six to seven fight deal. You know what I'm saying? And after that, he's walking away from the sport of boxing. Coach Calvin is letting it be known. And Javante Davis has admitted it on several occasions that Shakur Stevenson is on that list. But he's not next. You know what I'm saying? And they're, they're trying to play it. The, the main reason why they're trying to make it seem like the, their way of justifying Shakur Stevenson not being next is because they're saying he doesn't really, you know, generate much revenue. You know what I'm saying? Or how these guys overprice themselves. I don't know if Shakur Stevenson has a history of overpricing himself. But, um, you know, that's what he's making it seem like. These guys overpriced themselves. According to the interview I just watched. And then he went on to say how, you know, these guys, you know, they don't bring much moolah to the table. And he said, Javante Davis isn't taking no pay cuts. So because he ain't taking no pay cuts, the fight has to make sense financially. The only, I mean, the main criticism I got with that is that I feel like Shakur Stevenson will generate a lot more revenue than, you know, some of the guys that Javante Davis has fought previously. You mean to tell me that Hector Luis Garcia versus Javante Davis uh, will have bigger numbers than Javante Davis versus Shakur Stevenson? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? I think they understand that Shakur is a risk. And because he's a risk, they want it to be for the most amount of money possible. So they're taking the marinating route. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly what it is in my opinion. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Coach Calvin Ford lets it be known that Shakur Stevenson is not next for Javante Davis later on this year. So most likely Javante Davis will be taking on Isaac Cruz rematch. You see what I mean? May possibly uh, a fight against William Cepeda. Or maybe he might take a chance at 140 and fight somebody there. You know what I'm saying? But Shakur Stevenson is not next. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this. This is Mazuma TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm out of here, man. Peace.